welcome back to our uh, broadcast and to our page at Unique Finds and Furniture Designs. We welcome you and thank you for jumping on with us. If you are there, let us know so we can welcome you and um, thank you for uh, joining us this evening. So we are continuing our progress on this a vintage vanity. You see we came in and we have got some paint on her now and tonight i believe we're going to be working on some blending i apologize for my dog outside barking you can hear her she's decided that she sees something out there that's worth barking at so um if you are just jumping on this page and you have never been here before we welcome you my name is kimberly with unique finds and furniture designs i am a furniture artist and featuring dixie bell chalk paint as well as permit design transfer so thank you for joining us welcome and um, we are going to get started and I will give you some idea of how we got to this point so um, this video prior to tonight is out there on our uh, Facebook page as well as our YouTube channel at the Vintage Queen and um, you will be able to see multiple um, tutorials on how to begin from beginning to end on most of those. I'll have the beginning results and the end results on those videos. So you are welcome to jump over on our YouTube channel and uh, visit those and it will show the beginning uh, process of this piece as well as multiple pieces that we have still curing in the workshop behind me that are covered. So um, I cover them because a lot of times if I'm working any dust or anything that might be um, getting in the workshop could get all my pieces so I keep them covered until we uh, get a little further along and with this piece this is a um a vintage vanity you guys may have seen the dresser that we completed it was the mate to this vanity however i did them separately because a lot of times when you're selling your product it's a little easier to sell individual pieces than it is a multiple set so um that's the reason i sort of split these up and went different routes with these two pieces so again, thank you for joining. Um, if you are here with me, um, be sure and let me know you're here so I can welcome you. Um, Dixie Belt is changing a few things. They have some new gilding waxes that are going to be coming out on the market. So they are changing the, um, what do I wanna say, the formula that they are using in their gilding waxes. So we will be looking forward to some of those new ones coming on. And so if you love the waxes that we already have, those are not gonna be accessible after they come out with a new formula. So you might wanna grab up your favorite ones. We do still have a plenty of them at all three of our uh, locations. Actually, I should say both locations at the Nook and Cranny as well as Cooper's Vintage Village you'll be able to find those gilding waxes there. However, in a few months, we will be coming out with some new ones, um, which wouldn't surprise me with Dixie Bell if we don't see some new other products coming along our way as well. So um, you might wanna jump over there and see um, those gilding waxes at those locations. Now with this piece, I'm just gonna kind of give a rundown and go back over what we started with. Obviously, we started with the bare piece which is similar to what it looks like on the top. We did clean it with our white lightning cleaner. Always, always clean your piece really well. After I cleaned it, it dried and I came in and I put the boss on it. And the reason I put the boss on, you can kind of see from the top, it is a red cherry stain. And whenever I see that, um, I always uh, put my boss on anything that's cherry or mahogany is gonna bleed back through your paint. And if you want your paint, your paint to look nice and fresh and not any pink bleed through or yellow bleed through, then you're gonna wanna boss it. So just remember, I did use clear boss. That's why this looks clear on the top. That is actual clear boss on there. You can even see it has a slight sheen on it as well, but that is just boss on here. Nothing else has been done to it. And then I commenced to painting. The color on here is our, um, Spanish or uh, excuse me our Savannah mist is what color you're seeing on here This is the dried color of the Savannah mist. So it dried a little darker a lot of times um, In your paint some of your paints your pigmentation will dry lighter versus darker in ours It dries just a tad darker. I also have some sea glass here and I also have some drop cloth. So what does that mean? That means that there's a good possibility that tonight is going to be a blending 
um, workshop. So we'll be able to show you guys um, some blending techniques. Um, I'm just gonna play with them, kind of. I've had a lot of questions on our Facebook page when we are doing our lives for um, a little more information on how to blend. I've had a lot of people kind of get hung up on the blending and so I'm gonna kind of address that tonight, kind of help you guys out. I may go on the side. You may remember from previous video, if you were here previously, I did pop the veneer off of all these drawers and they, the, the, what I wanna say, the finish came in just as fine as you can see. Um, you would have never guessed that the veneer is off of here. The veneer is still on this piece, but all of these drawers veneer was removed. So just like in my other video, I'm gonna put you like that so you can kind of see the drawers and um, they really turned out nicely now in this case I did remove my hardware and the only reason I removed it was because of the veneer and I wanted to pop the veneer off around the oval hardware and this is the original hardware to this piece and so that gives its vintage away right away when you see that rounded now most of the time you guys know I'm one that normally paints my paints over my hardware but in this case, I will debate whether I will leave it. You just never know. So that's kind of what our hardware looks like. Now, if, you're, if you are doing like I just did, you can always just kind of get in here. Now I'll come in here and get this along the edges. You can always get it back open with a little screwdriver. And sometimes if they stick, you can kind of just get your screwdriver in there and bump them up and down. So I always kind of do it this way. And um, when we spoke the last time on our piece here, we were um, doing the Savannah Mist and going over our boss. So now tonight we're just going to kind of move forward and I have my spray bottle here and I have my oval medium brush. These are kind of my two go-to things. I always, we are working with chalk mineral paint. And this is a water-based paint. So anytime you're working with a water-based paint, you, water is your friend. Um, you want to keep your water. Anytime you feel that your brush starts to drag, then you want to either mist your brush or your product. Now the key point um, for a lot of people, and I'm not sure um, that they're starting off this way, but I'm just going to hit on this little tip is be sure and let your paint cure. Now, this paint has been on here since our last video, so that's Thursday night last week, and this is Tuesday. So this paint has had a good amount of time to cure onto this piece. And the reason I'm mentioning that is because when you go to blend, if your paint is not cure onto your piece, then your paint may move, it may come off, and because it's water-based paint, we're gonna be spraying it with water and we're gonna be putting paint on top of it. So a lot of times you can remove your paint if it is not cured underneath. If you guys are seeing my little Yorkie poo in the, in the video, <laughs> it's okay, she's not hurting anything. Come here, Lex. You wanna say hello? Lexi wants to say hello. Say, say hello, say hello. You wanna say hi? Say hi, Lexi. Okay, go to mommy. <laughs> She's like, no, I'm not. <laughs> so anyway, um, so tonight that's what I'm going to get started on. I just want to give you a little bit of a rundown on what we were doing with that. And um, down here at the bottom, we also did some Dixie mud, which I sanded. And I'm going to pull you down here a little bit more. So I did sand down here. We did paint it. It's just as smooth as the rest of the dresser. And that was Dixie mud that we put in there as well, where it had, it was not quite as smooth at this bottom piece that I popped off the veneer. So I did pop it off on both sides. So I'm just gonna come in here. And the reason I'm doing it, like I said, a lot of you gals have kind of messaged me and asked me some questions about blending. Key component is making sure your first coat is very cure so that you're not washing your paint back off when you're working with water-based paint. You want it to be pretty much in the cured mode. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and get started here. I just wanted to give you an idea and we can just do a drawer. It doesn't matter where we start, particularly on this piece. I just wanna get you guys to where you can kind of see if you're new here and you've not been here before, welcome. Thank you for joining me. I don't know how close I need to have you. 
And um, we do appreciate you coming on with us and um, sharing, liking our videos. Definitely keeps us in the news feed. If you like seeing more of what we are doing, um, that's a great way to sort of help us out. Now, my brush is dry. So this is an oval medium um, by Dixie Bell. We do offer these as well at, all, at our locations. All of our locations have the brushes. And um, it doesn't hurt to invest, and I'm just gonna mist it. Let me get it up here so you guys can see. I always start with a damp brush. The reason I start with a damp brush is we're working with water-based paint. It's just gonna make it easier. And these paints have been opened so I'm gonna just do a sample, and it's a little harder when you're on, um, let's say if you have ornate pieces, it's a little harder to do a blend on an ornate piece. In fact, we probably should do on a side and make it give you more of a visual maybe. So I have the Savannah Mist, and I have our sea glass, and I have Drop Cloth. So we can mess over here on a side. It's not gonna matter because once the paint cures, I can come back in and do something different with it. So for, for all intents purposes for blending, I'm just kind of shaking my paint up. Now, mind you, I did use a stir stick on my paints when I first opened them because there is settling possible. If these are on a shelf, most of ours moves fairly quickly, but on the larger sizes, if they um, feel like there's some sediment at the bottom, just give them a good stir. That's all you really need. And if they're a little thick when you open it, a little water is your friend again, as I said before. Water is not gonna hurt a thing. And if your lids get like mine do, where they get a little snug once in a while from using them at different times. And sometimes, knowing me, I might strip, put them on wrong. It's just when it feels real tight. So. A lot of times you can come in here with two multiple brushes um, if you're blending. And another thing that I did not grab that I wish I did grab, and I might just run grab real quick, so bear with me, is a paper plate. Always have a paper plate, paper towel, paper plate, and a baby wipes are both your friends when you're blending. So let me just step off the camera a second and grab my baby wipes. And let me grab another item for us. And I will be right back because I like to keep those. Sorry guys, I apologize for that. Had to sip off camera and grab a couple of things. And um, what I have here is our uh, mini flat. This is Dixie Bell's mini flat. So I ran and grabbed another brush and I'm gonna dampen it as well. For some reason I didn't have it out here tonight. Um, now with the maintenance of my brushes, just to give you guys an idea, I do take our um, white lightning cleaner and I mix it a little bit stronger than it says on the label and I put it in a little container and I kind of stand my brushes up in that container. Just kind of stand them up in the fluid about yay high because I don't normally paint any higher than that and that'll help you get some of the uh, smooge off of your brushes if they tend to be well loved like mine and it kind of gets them you know, real pliable again. So that's just a little brush maintenance if you will. So I'm just gonna throw that out there as a little tip as well. You can never have too many tips when you're painting, I think. Um, we all bring a little something different to the plate, and um, you never know when you're watching my video, any of the other girls that are out there that work with Dixie Bell products, we all um, can, there's little something for everybody that you might get out of those um, tidbits. And some people, you know, we still hear some people saying they never heard of using the baby wipes before. And I use a paper plate. The reason I use a paper plate is I knock some of the product back off of my plate. And for some reason, this one is well stuck together. I think it's going to stay together, and that's okay. 
So I am going to come in and I do believe I'm going to bring you guys over to the side because I think it'll be a little bit better if you're like beginning blending, um, if you're working with a flat surface. So maybe I should show you on a flat surface rather than a beveled surface because doing a blending on a beveled surface is a little bit more tricky. So we're going to go over to the side. So I'm going to just kind of relocate myself and this video for you guys. Because I know there's a lot of gals out there that have questions about these blendings and I want to get it to a little bit better um, view for you. So let me see here. Maybe this will be a little bit better for you all if I can get you back where you can kind of see and I apologize I'm trying to set that where you can kind of get a good idea of where we're at with this. Now, when I put the first coat on, I wasn't real concerned about solid coverage because I figured I was gonna come back in here and do some blending anyway. So um, that's why I wasn't too overly concerned about it. And yes, you're gonna see my bright pink Crocs maybe. They're my daughters, but I use them. So these are some contrasting colors. The, your okay. I started to say your water's in there. I don't know what she said. So I've got drop cloth. I may or may not like it, but for blending, I just want to add some colors just to kind of show you guys. This may not be my end result with my piece, but it'll definitely give you an idea for blending. So I have three different colors here. A lot of times I'll blend maybe light and work my way down so we could come in here with the which i may do for y'all with drop cloth then i'll come down to sea glass and blend our way down into the savannah mist that'll kind of help you guys if you've not been into any blending and you're interested in blending so um we have both brushes here and i may start with my dampen my brush and see this is nice and dry so i'm going to come in here and just kind of dampen my piece so yes i damped my brush and i'm dampening my piece okay this is a fine mist bottle and i'm just doing this because i've had a lot of people ask me so i'm just gonna and this is gonna seem bold so just bear with me and it's okay because we can always change it but for blending techniques i'm just going to put some on here and show y'all because so that's the goal for tonight. I don't necessarily have to get overly up to the very top, but you can, you can come in here and keep this Savannah mist and um, just blend your colors as you go along. So, okay, let's get some of this drop cloth on. This is drop cloth, by the way. So obviously my whole, my whole vanity is not like this, but if you wanted to, you can. I'm just going to do it for, because, you know, it's just a coat of paint. If you don't like it, you can always change it. That little monkey's going to run off with her daddy. As soon as I get started on the videos, they start running. They run off on me. So if you get paint up here and you're not wanting to, so I've just got a color here. You can see how it's different now. I'm going to come in here and just wipe my paint back off if I didn't want it there. So I'm going to mist it because always keep your, I always try to keep my um, surface damp, if you will. So just come in here and this is just for this video specifically. And then I'm going to come in with my other color and my brush. I'm using my oval medium and it is damp by the way. And I'm going to come in here and add me some sea glass. And I'm just going to show you all because there's a lot of blending that goes on. in our in our world because if you are a paint artist like me you like to blend and you like to add color so 
you see I'm just gonna come in here now I have my I'm gonna just kind of wipe that back and then I'm gonna come in and go over the whole thing doesn't matter which brush you use it okay I'm going multiple directions so you're kind of bringing those colors into each other I think you can kind of see how it's faded from light and fading down into this other color. And then you can come in with your Savannah Mist because that's the color I have here at the bottom. Because I don't want a sharp line, obviously. We want a blended line. Here comes my water. Anytime you feel your brush dragging on your paint, mist it. Give it some water. Give it some love, because it loves the water. And this would be very sea foam looking, because obviously I'm gonna come in here or buy the sea colors, if you will. So you're coming in here and you're coming and blending all of these colors back into each other. So then I just kind of wipe off the heavy part of my paint and then come back in with my brush. One of the keys I have learned is go back and forth. Go back and forth over your color. And then go back up and down. I think that's where you get your true blend, maybe. I don't, I mean, for me, I think it's different for all of us when we're painting. And if you think you're getting too much color, you can always come back in and you could come back in with a little more of whichever color you feel like you're losing when you're doing it because sometimes you will lose the color a little bit um, of course when it dries you'll see it a little bit stronger so you know um, my suggestion is play with it I kind of love it because I love the fact that you can just fashion pretty much your own color and your own style out of whatever you are painting. And again, you can always come back in. Now I've got florals that I'm gonna put on this. You guys saw that I was going to be, maybe if you were here with us on our previous video. And again, I have my baby wipe here. So if you get paint up here, and which I'm gonna do this top in a darker color, you can come back in and wash it down. So, I don't know. Hey, Miss Beth, hope you're doing well. Um, good to see you here tonight. So, I don't know if you can kind of see how it kind of fades from uh, the buttercream, uh, excuse me, the drop cloth down into the sea glass, down into the savanna mist. It kind of makes it just kind of dreamy and it does all kind of flows in together. If you feel like you need a little bit of a brighter color, again, I keep my brush damp so if I wanted to bring in a little bit more of this the um, this is the drop cloth on here if I wanted to add a little bit more drop cloth I'm gonna bring a little bit more of it in <clears throat> I don't know how well y'all see on there from where you guys are at oh I'm, I'm glad to see you I wish I had seen you in person though I haven't seen you in so long I miss seeing you. Of course, I know you live a busy life as well as I do. Life is always so, so busy for all of us. So again, um, I've got the drop cloth here. That's this lighter color. You can always come back in and add lighter and darker. Just blend them in. And um, I'm just kind of adding a little bit more of that shade, if you will. And then, uh, like I said, I come back in. And you can use a dry terry cloth towel instead of a uh, baby wipe um, to pull back some of that paint. So each time you blend your paint in, you can kind of wipe your brush down and pull your paint with you. Pull your paint down. And, um, and then go back to whichever color you're blending at your lowest, which for me is the the uh, savannah mist it's my my underlying color if you will and the reason that my color is not sliding on me 
or coming off on me, if you will, and it's making it just kind of subtle change all the way down. I think you guys can see that, I don't know, I'm not seeing it from your angle, where you can kind of see where it's going, and once it dries, it'll show up more color from the savanna mist to the sea glass to the drop cloth. And if you like a little more sea glass in there, you, all you have to do is come in and just add a little bit more. Just keep your surface wet and add where you like it. And you see it's dragging there, so of course I wanna keep it moist. And just kind of bring in just a little bit more sea glass if I wanted it that way. See, if you're not seeing it enough, if you think it's not enough of a contrast, if you will, and then you just keep working your colors, flowing your colors in. Like I say, a lot of times to get my blend, I will blend my colors back and forth. So that might be a key note for some of you ladies out there that have been struggling with a little bit of your blend is to maybe run your colors back and forth back and forth this way and then up and down because it'll just kind of help the colors join one another as you go along. So that's kind of my, my way of getting my blend in if I'm blending with multiple colors and it will um, just kind of marry nicely when they dry. So I think you can kind of see where that's going along this, hopefully you can. So you can kind of see it fit, go from a little bit lighter shade into the other shades on the way down the dresser. And um, this will give it kind of a very, like I said, a very beachy vibe, if you will. And maybe now that it's getting into spring, I am going to put the Cosmic Roses on here though. And so these colors will all work with the Cosmic Roses. So I may go ahead and just do this particular vanity in a multi shade and go all the way around the front and bring these colors down as we go along. The thing is, if you walk away from it tomorrow and you absolutely walk out tomorrow and you hate it, it's just a coat of paint. Just start all over again, get your mist bottle, get the color, a different color if you choose, and come back in and um, paint it all solid or blend. It's totally your preference, obviously. So this is just all one color. This makes it kind of look unique and different. So um, that's why I tend to lean toward blending sometimes because when I go to put the Cosmic Roses on here, it's going to really play into all of those colors. It's going to play into the Savannah Mist, the Sea Glass, and then the Drop Cloth. You could have used Fluff up here. It would have been fine. It would just be a, more of a white tone instead of a, um, a kind of a creamy tone. But it's certainly your preference. Doesn't matter really what color you're using, they can all sort of be blended in together. So um, I just wanted to kind of touch on that because I've had a lot of questions on the blending technique. So you can go from the Savannah Mist into something that's a little bit different like that. And if you like it, you know, just keep on a trucking with it. So basically I always try to blend into my lower color or my base color that you're seeing on the main front of this. So I can just go around. I really kind of like it, it's kind of different. Um, a lot of times I might would do more of the sea glass and the savannah mist and maybe eliminate all together the, the um, drop cloth in it. But it just really depends on your preference. I'm gonna let it dry because it most likely it'll be unique and different and so when I come in here and maybe do something else with it, it'll look just fine. Uh, so it's really, 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 excuse me for walking through your view. It's really a preference to how you might like it. So, you know, now that it's drying, once it dries, I'll have a little bit better look-see at it. So I really like the Savannah Mist um, color, but I also like how it just kind of blends with the multiple colors going down. It just kind of gives it a unique style. And of course, I love, love, love my um, sea glass. I've always loved the sea glass. So I'm coming in here. If you guys have any questions for me, um, just shoot them at me because that's what I'm here for. That's my goal is to kind of help you guys learn what I do or how to use Dixie Bell products. 
so that you too can um, get the best results possible. That is the uh, goal. It's always, always my goal to kind of help along the way. So you couldn't do it. I'm going to show you maybe a little different technique. Say if you were just going to use, let's just put this drop cloth on here. It's not going to hurt anything. So say you were going to use drop cloth and then you wanted to come in and just blend your Savannah Mist with your drop cloth. So you're going to come back in then with your base color, which is the Savannah Mist. And I'm just going to come back in here. And I'm going to try to get in here since. So I'm just going to come in. Maybe you guys can kind of see with my Savannah Mist. And this is kind of a, a different way to do it. You could eliminate the sea glass altogether. Just come in with your Savannah Mist. And that's my drop cloth in the middle. So this is drop cloth on here, Savannah Mist on here. So I'm just gonna come in here and just kinda marry these two colors together. So then I have a blended blend, if you will, of my two colors. So that changed the whole look of the piece again. So you could do something like that on the side or something like this in the front. So you can kind of have it light and kind of work your way down. Just really depends on your, your personal preference. And you might want to leave the sea glass itself all together out and only work with your drop cloth, which is your lighter tone. So what it does is just kind of lightens up the whole piece. Again, I miss my piece and I'm gonna come in here. This is the drop cloth again. So I'm kind of using it as my lighter shade. And a lot of times, you know, you do just kind of like in the middle. And then I'm gonna come back in with my Savannah Mist, which is my base color. And I'm gonna just blend my base color back in around my piece. Get a little more paint. So really the fun is you never know what color you're gonna create when you are blending. And now you'll see I go over the whole shenanigan again. And just kind of blend my colors in. If you think you have too much of one color or the other, just come back in with the darker shade or the lighter shade, whichever it is that's making your, your eye see it differently and just come back in and add it. So that's basically how I do it. And um, that just kind of, you can see via the uh, lighting there, how it really lightened up the piece from this color, like down here. Maybe you guys can see, let me pull you up, maybe. Maybe you can see, I think maybe you can kind of see that. You can see how it's different from the side to where we're working now. So it just kind of lighten it up. This is why I'm not overly concerned about my first coat, although Dixie Belle does cover really, really well. I don't worry about my first coat. I get my base coat on, I let it cure so I'm not pulling it back off when I'm blending. And then I just come in here and start um, doing my blend and getting where I want it. If you're into blending, if you're not a, a big blender, don't worry about it and just go ahead and you know add your color with whatever, you, however you're doing it. But for tonight's purposes, I was just gonna come on, give you guys um, a couple of tips on blending because I've had a lot of questions and frustration with um, doing the blending on the pieces. And so I just wanna kinda address that for those gals who have had those questions um, that have been messaging me about those questions. So that's pretty much how you do it when you get your blending in. So you can um, come back in, change your color any way you want. Again, this is Savannah Mist. This is drop cloth being added with Savannah Mist. You can use fluff, you can use cotton, you can use um, even sawmill gravy would probably give you um, some, some lighter tone color. 
working with two different brushes. I got a flat brush and an oval medium brush. You, either one, you could have two of different brushes and that's how I get my blending on. One, each of them are carrying a coat, but mostly uh, for blending, I use the oval medium because um, it helps. I think it just does a little bit better with the blending than the flat. So the flat, I pretty much just add my color and then I use my oval medium to sort of add the blending in. So um, I'm gonna do this bottom drawer. Now, if uh, this could be a demo uh, piece, if you are coming in, like I say, and uh, tomorrow you walk out and it dries and you're like, uh, you really don't like it, whatever. I like, like Miss Suzanne said, I always say, would say the same thing that she gives everybody the advice, walk away, give yourself some time to decide whether or not you like it. It might look a little different in the morning than it looks tonight while you're painting because you're right on top of it. So give it a chance to cure. And if again, you still are hating what you have done, just, um, it's just a coat of paint away from a new original. So that's the thing when you're working with uh, chalk paint or any, but any, um, any blending technique, you just give yourself the opportunity to create something uniquely yours when you are adding the blending. And you don't have to do it this way. You can blend your colors prior to, um, like mixing a couple of different colors together. That's always an option as well. I just kind of marry the colors together. So back and forth in all directions helps a little bit better for those colors to just kind of marry together. You see, I didn't really wash my brush off a lot on this. I just kind of went with the flow. Because sometimes I think that makes a piece even more unique when it's not, when it's perfectly imperfect, if you will. So it's not as perfect. And so this is just coming in here and getting a coat or two of paint on with a different blend technique. So you can always kind of shade and light a little bit differently because when you put your florals on, it's gonna kind of highlight wherever you've got your different colors in. And I think it'll make it even more unique. So, so that is a my method. Everybody may do it a little bit differently, but it's the bare basics on giving you nice coverage. And obviously what you do to one side, you're gonna do the other side and kind of pull the piece in and pull it, pull it all together. And then when you put your, if you're doing a transfer and you put your transfer on, it's just gonna make it very stunning to have had, you know, the blend and it makes it uniquely yours because when you are blending, it doesn't matter if I blend this piece and you guys blend the piece and we're all sort of, hey, Ashley, and we're all working together. We're all gonna blend it a little bit differently. So each piece is gonna turn out uniquely different, specific to the painter. And so that's what's kind of fun about it. Ashley, I got my beautiful jewelry. Thank you so much. Miss Ashley is, used to be my jewelry girl, still my jewelry girl, but used to be my jewelry girl up at my store. And um, bless her heart, she's out in Arizona. And uh, she did a live the other night and I was able to get some of her goodies. And um, if you don't know, it's Mally Lou Lovelies. You guys jump on over on her Facebook page. She does lives and um, she does live jewelry sales. So you're interested in some of her awesome, unique jewelry. She ships it on to you and everything. And she has amazing jewelry, so that she makes herself, her and her little sweet girls. And Miss Nellie, Miss Miss Nellie. So I'm just gonna come in here. Thank you guys for sharing our video and jumping on live with us tonight. We appreciate that. I am just doing a little blending on this piece and trying to answer some of y'all, some of the ladies' questions about addressing some blending issues that they've been having. So you, that's what I'm doing tonight. Over there, we did a little bit of sea glass in it. Over on this side, excuse me for the bobble, I'm just trying to pull you in a little bit better view. Um, 
Tonight I am coming in and just gonna put some, I'm working with drop cloth here, uh, which is kind of more of an off eggshell kind of white. And then I have our Savannah Mist here. So I'm pulling these colors together. I'm gonna go, you do not need an awful lot of paint in order to do some blending. So you don't have to have like a full can of paint. You know, if you've got little scraps laying around and you've got, you know, just a little, little bit of paint, that's all you need when you're doing the blending because you're not really, you, you see I'm not using a whole lot of paint. My basic coat is already on here and if it's hit or miss a little bit, it's okay because when I come in again with the second coat, you're not gonna see it because I'm gonna blend in it. So I'm gonna close this drawer in so I can come in and I'll show you guys that. I thought about putting a piece of my would you bin that we, um, we carry through Dixie Bell and I may put it on here, I haven't decided yet. But I will show you guys that because I have a piece back here. I have a couple of pieces. I could take a pull, you guys. So these are Would You Been by through Dixie Bell. Um, and so I have one that looks like this. And then I have one that looks like this. So super cute. So if you had a buffet, you could set it up this way. Or you could put it here. So you just apply it. This would be in between these. So I'm not sure um, if this will match very well with this hardware, so I haven't put it on. So I'll just kind of show you the hardware. So once it's on, it's, so there's this one, and then we have this one, which I really like this one. So uh, what you do is you get your, what I use is, oops, and I don't have it behind me, but I use the Gorilla Glue, the Gorilla Wood Glue, so I would come in here and measure between here and here, and I'd get my placement where I wanted it, and I would glue it. Now these are flexible and bendable with a hot uh, hair dryer. Hey Kayla, how are you? Are you doing well? I'm trying to see, I know there's someone else here. Hey, and welcome, thank you. Uh, thank you for joining us tonight. So um, these are, would you been, uh, got these through Dixie Bell, we do carry them. And so there's a couple that you could put on there if you wanted to add a little detail to this piece. So, um, and then inside here, actually, is the actual hardware for this. I wanted to pull this one out. See, it's a little bit smaller. So you could put this in here. And um, once you apply it, once you adhere it to the piece, then you paint over it. You'd never know it wasn't part of the piece. So it's an, op it's an option, you don't have to do it. But what I'm actually doing tonight is just giving you guys um, some information on blending because I've had a lot of questions asked with blending. And so that's what I was trying to address tonight with you guys. Um, thank you for jumping on with us. Um, thank you for um, being here and being a part of our video and watching with us. So I have here, this is the C. This is, um, we're actually working with drop cloth and Savannah Mist. So I'm gonna hit this Savannah Mist here on the sides because I wasn't really paying, I was getting it on, but I wasn't too worried about whether I was kind of a hit or miss because I just wanted my base coat on. So another thing, if you guys are just jumping on with me, one of the reasons that I do my base coat first and I let it cure. We haven't been on here since Thursday last week, okay? And it's Tuesday. So this paint has been curing since then. So when you're blending, it, to me, it's always a good option, or I feel like, to have your paint kind of cured onto your piece. And that keeps you from sliding any of your paint off or having any of your paint move. So this is our basic color on here, and that's the Savannah Mist. And now I'm coming in with my mini brush and a little drop cloth. Yes, you could use any kind of white. This is kind of an off-white. And I'm just gonna come in here and put it where I think I want it. So this is the drop cloth. And I'm just gonna give it a little bit of light, lightning inside the centers around the edge. And if you feel like it's not enough, you can always come back in. So I keep my piece misted, and then I come back in with my original color. So if you're new and you're just watching this for the first time, this is how 
I do my blending technique. Not everybody does it the same way. And let me grab something here. Grab my baby wipes, because if I get up here, I want to be able to pull it back off, because I'm not actually going to, this is going to be in the coffee bean, most likely. So I'm thinking right now, I'm, I am apt to change my mind from time to time. So this is my base color, the Savannah Mist. This is my drop cloth, okay? So when I'm blending, I go multiple directions. Hey, Kayla, how are you doing? What's up with the hardware? Yeah, I know, I never leave, take my hardware off, do I? It's unlike me. So I'm just gonna come in here and I'm just gonna marry my two colors together. Okay. So this is how I do my blending. Everybody does it a little bit differently, and that's okay. We both could be, we all could be painting this one vanity tonight, and they'd all turn out differently because everybody's eye is just a little bit different. So then there's my lighting in, and then you can come back in with a little bit of your Savannah Mist. Doesn't take a lot of paint, you guys. So two eight ounce jars of paint is plenty. You wouldn't even need an 8-ounce jar for your highlighting. You could use just very little paint. I'm obviously not putting a lot of paint on here. So I'm just blending my two colors together. What's up with my hardware? My hardware is original. So you see how the hardware is kind of dark? I'm going to put coffee bean on the top, so it might make a nice contrast there, so I haven't touched my hardware. This is original. It's not been cleaned up. It is as it is. Most of the time, I paint my hardware. The reason I did not paint my hardware on here is because I had to pull all the veneer. If you guys are new and hadn't seen this piece, this was veneer on here, and I had to pull it off. Sorry, my battery's saying it is low. So I had to pull all the veneer off of these drawers in order to paint. So this is uh, old veneer peeled off. So in order to get the veneer out from under my hardware, I had to pull my hardware off in order to do that. So that's what's up with the hardware, Kayla. Had to pull it off in order to get underneath of it. And so unfortunately, I removed it. Uh, most of the time, I never do that, um, but when you're trying to get around old veneer, it's kind of a must. you got to get all that veneer off if it's popping off and peeling, so that's how I do it. I just get rid of it. Now, I am missing my piece as I go along. I'm going to stay in the front because it's easier for you guys than up in here, but I will go in here as well and blend because my customers are going to see that in there, and so I want it to look just like the rest of the piece. And so I am just going to come in here. This is my Savannah Mist. And I'm going to make sure that it matches the rest of my piece. And then I will blend some more. So this is my oval medium brush. And let me just kind of adjust the... I think you guys can still see, maybe. I'm going to kind of move her a little bit more so it will kind of help you guys see a little bit better on the drawer. So let me kind of push this old gal into view. That's prior to the problem with these old pieces that they've been slid around for ages and ages. So I don't know how low my battery is, but it said something about getting low. If you, if I lose you guys, I apologize. It's probably due to that. So I'm going to come in here with this is my drop cloth color. So here, you see, is the drop cloth. That's the color I'm using. Hey, Jane. Is that Jane? Yes, Jane. So I missed my piece, got my drop cloth, add my drop cloth. So this is my center color in here. So there's my center color. Thank you for uh, joining us tonight and um, being here with us for viewing our broadcast and for sharing. We appreciate that. Keeps us in the news feed. We appreciate um, everyone being here with us tonight. Baby wipes, guys, is what I use to come in here and pull my paint off if I don't like where it is. So you can just come in here and wipe it back. And my baby wipes wet. So you can just come in here and clean any paint that might be up where you don't want it. I'm going to 
put my coffee bean in there. And um, mist your piece, keep it damp. And this is my Savannah mist. So I'm just getting back in my paint. A lot of people say, do you worry about your paints getting mixed up? Not really, because when I'm mixing these, I am using them only, pretty much only for this one piece because I'm using probably, most likely, out of pieces of paint as my drop cloth is and my Savannah Mist. So if you want a little more Savannah Mist, come back in with your base color. Coming back in with my base color and getting a little bit more dark on it so that most of the light and the shading is in the center of my piece for what I'm doing. So for this particular piece, that's how I'm creating that shaded effect. So you come in, you mist. So I've misted this. I'm gonna come in, I've got my, this is my flat. You can use two oval mediums, doesn't matter. This just happens to be what I have. So I have two flat, I have a flat and an oval medium. And so that's what I'm using. So if you guys have any questions, just shout them out at me because that's what I'm here for. That's why I do these broadcasts. They are to help you guys learn how to use the different products that, that Dixie Bell offers because I do feature Dixie Bell um, in my work. And so this is just a form of helping you guys when it comes to different tips and tricks along the way. I'm going over the whole piece multiple directions doesn't matter I just want that blend so you see how it just kind of gives it a nice mystical blend and that's just pretty much how you do it if you still want it lighter you come in and you add a little bit more light if you want it darker you just come back in with your base color and blend your a little bit darker base in along the way so it's really just 100% everybody's own personal preference. And so that's just kind of how I'm going. And it might be a little different back and forth, back and forth, but that's what kind of makes it unique. You wouldn't be blending it if you didn't want it to be unique and different. So, um, so there you go. That's why I'm adding this color because I always like to do something a little different to each piece. And so I'm just going to come in here and gather me some light. I may even come back into the bars on the side of this and, and lighten it. Just really depends on my, how I feel when I come back in. So um, am I going to? Oh, thank you. You're very kind. Um, I am going to be coming back in over this piece with the Cosmic Roses, guys. That is the uh, transfer I had used on the um, dresser over here. It's a yellow dresser that I did with, um, what I wanna say, what color did I, daisy? I used the daisy because it was getting close to springtime here in North Carolina and I was just feeling all springified. So I went in and I painted the daisy over there with the cosmic roses. It's the one that's under the green here. I can kind of give you a little peek at it that one right there. So you can kind of see her over there. She's sneaking over there. I keep her covered because she is curing in, in house and I don't want to splatter paint over there on her. But that those florals that you can kind of see in that piece over here, let me just kind of gather you a little closer. So those cosmic roses that you see in that is actually going to be on this piece. So you can see the blues are going to look lovely. That's why I'm bringing in the lighter tone because some of the florals are lighter and some of the florals have the light blue and a little bit of the darker blue. So that's why I'm trying to, why I am actually giving this a blended look because I will be working with the Cosmic Roses, I believe that's the name of it, onto this piece. I'm thinking I had the... I wondered if I had the, I don't see it here, where a lot of times I'll have the, the container out here with me. Now I'm gonna go, what I did up here, I'm still gonna do down here at the bottom. So I'm gonna come down here, I'm gonna take my mist bottle, I'm gonna mist it down here, because water's your friend when you're working with water-based paints, guys, and this is water-based paint. 
and I'm coming in with my, this is drop cloth. Again, you could use fluff, you could use cotton, um, you could even use um, the haint blue and um, the sea, the, I want to call the sea mist for so, I don't know why I want to call it sea mist tonight, savannah mist. So you could use the um, haint blue and it would work just as well because it's a lighter color. So anything that kind of highlights and adds to your color that you already have will work perfectly fine. As you can see, I'm not using much paint at all on either, either one. Mostly, if anything else, you're using more water. So um, that is key to blending. Keeping a mist bottle, keeping your surface um, damp, it helps your paint go further and it definitely helps when you're doing your blending. It makes a lovely blend um, when you're working with your, when you're working with water-based paints, I should say. And of course, all of Dixie Bell's is water-based paint. So there you have it. So there we have pretty much, you see some would you bend on the top of my piece here? Um, these are from Dixie Bell. We did order those through Dixie Bell and um, they make lovely um, additions to your piece. So you could put this here, um, and that's why you see these up here on the top. I think you guys can see them. And you could adhere these with the um, Gorilla Wood Glue, and you could attach them here and make a lovely accent here as well. So it really is your preference. I just want to kind of pull them and show you guys the different things you could do. The original hardware, as you can see, is dark. This is going to be coffee bean on the top. And pretty much that is uh, the rundown on tonight's broadcast, which is showing you um, the technique that I use for blending multiple colors together. You could do the same technique with three or four different colors, doesn't matter. Just kind of work them all in together. Um, use a good synthetic brush that does kind of help you um, in a chip brush situation it might would be a little bit more difficult with a chip brush um, just kind of you know a wing try it and see how it works if you're not getting the technique quite so well um, it could help to have a little bit better synthetic brush to kind of help you get that smooth texture out. Now you can see it's kind of in the drying stage and when it is in the drying stage it might be a little darker here and a little lighter there. Just give it its chance to cure completely. Um, dry overnight then come back if you're still not happy with your look that you've got. It's just a coat of wet paint away from being something different. So always remember that and um, I hope you all have a blessed evening. I thank you for joining our broadcast this evening. I hope you will join us again we're normally here Tuesday, Thursday evenings, 8 o'clock, and we look forward to seeing you. And hopefully we will give you some tips and tricks along the way that will help you um, continue to upscale and repurpose your vintage finds. Thank you all so much, and have a lovely evening. Bye-bye, guys.